This week, I've got an update on what I recommend to use down there when it comes to cleaning, so stay tuned. Hey everyone, welcome back. I'm Dr. Jennifer Lincoln, board certified OBGYN, author, educator, now a podcaster. And I am here to do an update on a video that's been pretty popular. This was one of my first YouTube videos that I made. So I'm gonna link to it up above, but don't judge me. It was back in the old days before I had a really good camera and audio. It sounds like I'm whispering and, you know, help editing, but the content is still good, but I decided it was time for an update. So what I'm talking about today, I'll review the products that I think are good for cleaning down there. And when I say down there, I mean the vulva, not the vagina, but we'll get to that. And I'm gonna add in some new products that I'm now putting on that list that have come to my attention in the past year. So here we go. Before I get started, go ahead and like, subscribe, turn on the bell so you never miss an episode. Okay, let's do a quick recap, first of all, on what I mean when I'm talking about cleaning. Nothing should go on the inside. Nothing should go on the inside. No douching, not even a water douche, no soap, no cleansers, nothing. I know there's so much garbage out there that people want to sell to you and want to make you think that you need to so that your vagina will smell, taste, and maybe look like a pina colada, I don't know. Please don't, they're terrible. And yes, I have reviewed this on the what not to use down there in this video up here so you can check that out. But long story short, less is more and when it comes to cleaning your vulva, which is the outside part of the vagina, it's fine if you just wanna use water. But I get it, some people want more than that and that's fine and that's why we're making this video today. And even though there's articles like this coming up even in the, you know, the past few months or whatever that say you need these products, you need none of these particular products. I will never ever recommend a special cleanser made for feminine hygiene or for down there because you don't need something special and they just wanna make money off of you. So I don't care how cute or pretty or organic it is, it's just a waste. And when you buy these products, you're telling these companies that you are falling for this kind of marketing and it keeps the cycle of shame going. I've realized that it's helpful for me to actually show you when I talk about how to clean down there because I've gotten lots of people asking me. So this is a vulva. Quick anatomy review, you've got your clitoris here, you've got your inner lips or the labia minora here, which can be out might be tucked in, everybody's different and normal. And these are what we call the outer lips or the labia majora. These are the ones where hair grows. So when I'm talking about cleaning, I'm talking about cleaning the labia majora here, just the outside. So with using these cleansers or these soaps, you can have it just run over and then you just sort of pat it dry. Or if you're specifically using a washcloth with soap or cleansers, you can use it just to clean the outer part here where the hair is. If you get a little bit on the outer part of the labia minora, it's probably not a big deal, but know that this skin is way more sensitive, so you shouldn't be trying to scrub or anything like that. And never, ever, ever anything in the vagina, okay? Okay, so I'm still a huge fan of all of these cleansers that I mentioned in my previous video, which includes these cleansers that you see here by Ivana Cream, Eucerin, CeraVe, Cetaphil, and Free and Clear. These are still awesome. They have no fragrances. They have very minimal ingredients. They don't have any essential oils, which I love essential oils, and I said this in my last video, but not for your vulva. And these are all cleansers. Cleansers tend to be more well tolerated than soaps because they're less drying and they're closer to the pH of the vulvar skin. However, if you do want to use a soap or you find that your skin tolerates it well, these are still good too. These are Dove Unscented and Dr. Bronner's Unscented Soap, not the peppermint. Okay, so here is the first of my three new additions to this list. And they are both by Neutrogena. The first one by Neutrogena is this ultra gentle hydrating cleanser. And the second one is just the ultra gentle daily cleanser. The ultra gentle hydrating cleanser has obviously a little bit more things to hydrate. What I like about both of these, again, no fragrances, no essential oils. These are both cleansers, which means that they're not soaps, so they're less likely to be drying. They're more close to the pH of the skin of the vulva, which means less likely to be irritating. I also love the price point on these. These are both fairly inexpensive. You can get them anywhere, and they're not made by a feminine hygiene company, so you can feel good about spending this money. And you may be asking, well, Dr. Jen, some of these things say that they're for your face. You can use it all over your body. They're very sensitive. And yes, that includes for cleaning the vulva. The third one that I'm adding to my list of cleansers that I think could be okay for using on your vulva are by La Roche-Posay. I'm not gonna make a joke about what that sounds like. Anyway, so this one is La Roche-Posay Tolerine. I have no idea how you say that. Hydrating 
Gentle Face Cleanser. Yes, I know it has the word face in there. So what I like about this is that it's fragrance-free. And you gotta watch out. Some things will say they're fragrance-free and then you look on the ingredients and it says fragrance. Like, hello, that drives me nuts. And the reason I really like this one is that it's actually got a stated pH that's very close to the pH of the vulva. So you're less likely to have drying. Just like CeraVe, this cleanser has ceramides in it, which is a really hydrating, moisturizing ingredient that can be really good if you are noticing that you have dry skin. So. Another one not made by a feminine hygiene company that could be good for your vulva. All of these that I mentioned, both the ones that I've always said are good, as well as these new additions, everybody can have a skin reaction to them or they might cause drying, even if it's a cleanser. So it's all about what works for you. You may notice that you're fine using it for six months and then all of a sudden you're noticing some redness or some itching. If that's the case for you, it's worth taking a break and seeing if that's what's going on. But if you're not sure, it's always a good idea to get in touch with your healthcare provider. I hope this update has been helpful. I hope this video was slightly more technological logically pretty and well done as compared to my first video. Go ahead and drop your comments or questions in the comment section. Follow me on my other socials if you want to see me all week long and see other content that I have related to this. And if you've got questions you want me to answer on my podcast, go ahead and call this number here, leave a voicemail, or you can go ahead and leave me a voice DM on my Instagram DMs. I hope this was fun. And until next week, stay safe and know that less is more on your vulva.